Hello everybody and welcome back to the Director of Football Sabotage with the Livorno. Now in today's episode we are going to play the final game of the Serie A season that will be away from home against Torino. And then of course we'll talk about next season, how this season's went, the players and all that sort of stuff. So the last time we met was of course the victory against Palermo. We followed that up with a 2-0 home win against Bologna. Zach getting both the goals for us in the 16th and 90th minute. They did miss a penalty in the 27th but it was a good good result and good performance by us and then back to back defeats starting with Perugia we got a man sent off in the 70th minute Philipp, Filippo Renocchia who's in the team because uh, Drian got injured so they got a goal in the 94th minute to ruin me hopes and dreams we then played Lazio at home and absolutely dominated this match and Ciro Mobile scored in the 30th minute and they got the win so this is how the Serie A table looks going into the final game of the season. We are on 72 points, two points behind Roma in second place. So second place is still on the table if Roma mess up, but realistically third place is where we're going to finish and that is absolutely fine by me. So this is how we're going to line up for the final game of the season. Dullo will start in goal. Ivanovic will start at right back with Taglia Pietra and Kovac starting at centre back. Uh, Rada is suspended which is why he's not playing and Carpano is recovering from injury which is why we're needing to use our third and fourth choice centre backs. Tristan Fick will start a left back. Philippe Renocchia as I said Drian is injured so Renocchia gets the nod at defensive midfield. Milenkovic, Badabanga and Fernand I'm sorry no I'm not going to say Badabanga anymore I've I've kind of had enough he's going to be called George Banga uh, and no no not Banj. I apologise, but it makes it easier for me to say. So, Banga, Fernandez in the centre of midfield. Darian Schmidt and Zach will start up front and leading the line. Zach is definitely coming to his own after we've taken away the attacker midfielder spot. Uh, I think playing the deep line forward, forward role doesn't work so well when you've played somebody in behind. So, I think going into next season, I've got a decision to make as to whether I'm going to pursue the three central midfielders or whether I return to the attack and midfielder or not so we kick off against Torino the final game of the season away from home the result probably doesn't really matter too much you'd imagine Roma would at the very least get a victory in their final game but I think even if they if they draw and we win we might get second due to the head-to-head -head rule we did beat them 5-1 earlier in the season and although they did win the reverse leg I think due to the goal difference we would go second so you know a win would be more than welcome the first highlight in Torino in possession, what a great ball that is for Kennedy on the left-hand side. Kovacs clears and he clears again and maybe we can break. Milenkovic tries to set away Derry and Schmidt and Soriano can come away with it for Torino after their defence clears. Pereira gets dispossessed. This highlight, what's happening? Right, we're in control of the ball now. Ivanovic sets away Schmidt down the right-hand side. He gets the ball in and Zach, he had all the time in the world there and he completely misses the target. He should be getting that on target and making the keeper work at the very least. And he probably should have scored, but it is still nil-nil. Banger sets away Darian Schmidt in the box. He takes it around the keeper. And Darian Schmidt gets his 13th goal of the season. He's been going through a little bit of a uh, dry spell after coming into form. So it's, I'm glad to see him getting the goal. And Banger with an absolutely great pass. And I'm not sure if the defender got a touch there in the challenge. But Darian Schmidt puts it in the, uh, in the back of the net and we are leading 1-0. And we start a game with Fick on this left-hand side. He founds Banga in the centre. He slots the ball through. Lovely for Zach. But he gets dispossessed. And Fick can maybe get the ball in. Milenkovic is back post. And Milenkovic gets his second goal of the season. And Fick with another assist from that left-hand side. And puts us 2-0 up. Zach gets dispossessed in the box. But Fick picks it up. And Milenkovic with a little bit of a De Canio, uh, scissor kick there. Or whatever it's called. And he makes it 2-0. And that's going to be that for the first half. We go in 2-0 up away from home against Torino, which is a great result so far. We'll get back in for the second half. I think Torino are a mid-table side at the minute in terms of how they've been performing this season. So going away from home and beating them 2-0 is nothing to sneeze at, you know. 60 minutes in and we'll make some changes. We're going to get Fick off for Robert Martinez. Get him a last game in just in case he's not here for next season. Zach's not performing particularly well. So we'll get Skirbeck on for him. And we'll save our final substitute just in case we need it in case of injury. Banger sets Darren Schmidt away again. He's in behind the defence. Can he put this in the back of the net? He can't. Hrodecki with a great save. Another highlight now. And this time it's coming through the left-hand side for us. But we do get dispossessed. 
and Torino could come away with it with Niang on this right hand side. We do get back into possession though and Banga has been slotting through some lovely through balls this game. Not that time. Teixeira comes down this right hand side for Torino. Milenkovic cuts the ball out. I don't know who he's looking for. We need to be careful here to not lose the ball. Taglia Pietra just boots the ball long and Darian Schmidt is in behind now. He's got the pace to beat his man and he puts in the back of the net for his 14th goal of the season. His second game, uh, second goal of today's game. And uh, I'm glad he's scoring. <laughs> Taglia Pietra, he's not a technical centre-half. He's not going to be knocking it about and keeping possession. So the big kick up does find his way to Darian Schmidt. And sometimes, in the football manager in particular, that's just the way it's done. 10 minutes to go, we'll make one more substitution in today's game. Ivanovic is going to come off for Belangiwoli and we'll see how that fares for the final 10 minutes. And now it is full time, Livorno 3, Torino 0, a great way to end this season. So this is how the table looks at the end of the season. There is still a few teams too hard to play their final game of the season. Roma did win their final game of the season, so we do sit in third position. And that is where we will finish. So Champions League football is coming to Livorno for next season. In terms of any players in term, in the key stats, Belangiwoli got 13 assists from right back this season, which is absolutely fantastic. Which baffle, probably baffle you more as to why I'm not starting him and trying to get Ivanovic in the side. But you just he's a three-star, three-star player. He did come from our academy and I feel really, really guilty for not giving him all the game time possible. But if you just look at his attributes, he's not quite there. He's not at the level that you need to be. But third position is absolutely fantastic for us. Champions League football for our next season will greatly boost our reputation in terms of club football. And it'll maybe let us keep a, ha uh, a hang of some players compared to if we hadn't got it. So looking at the squad in terms of next season, some really, really key players for us has been Belangiwoli. You know, he's performed extremely well. 24 starts, 3 goals and 14 assists with a 7.29 average rating is the best in the squad. So it's a shame that he hasn't got that potential anymore and this is pretty much as good as he's going to get. Tristan Fick has come in and he's played 17 games and he's done well in from the January transfer window, 7.2. But you do expect our wing-backs to be part of... As if we're keeping clean sheets and we're performing well, our wing-backs are always going to get high average rating because we rely on them so much for their attack and presence. Carpano... He's had a fantastic season, a 7.19 for a centre-back. Six assists, which is surprising with one goal, but he is wanted by the world. And although he doesn't have a minimum fee release clause, you can imagine he's going to go in the summer transfer window. Porto, PSG, Real Madrid, Leipzig, Roma and Tottenham. You would imagine someone's going to negotiate with our director of football and he's going to leave the club. Petarada, our other centre-half, has done well despite his poor heading stat. He hasn't really improved a great deal compared to what I would prefer, but he has done well this season with a 7.14 average rating. There's nothing to sneeze at. Perika Ivanovic, he's definitely improved his average rating in the last in the second half of the season. He really was poor at right back at the beginning half of the season, as you would imagine for a guy who's not familiar with the role. But he is now a dark green, starting to get a bit lighter, um, and hopefully throughout the course of next season, if he's still at the club, and if I, if I am still pursuing him as I was starting right back, you would imagine he's going to get even more comfortable in that role. Rafa Pereira's done well when he's got game time. Darian Schmidt finishes on a 7.03 average rating with 14 goals in 34 games. I've got to admit I am a little bit disappointed in his return from this season. But hopefully next season, if he starts the club, he will perform a little bit better. Ruben Canedo's done well when he started on left back. Zach has done okay. Probably a little bit below average with 7.01 average rating. But seeing that 16 goals in 35 games is fantastic for a striker in the sort of system we play. So I can't complain about too much about that. And he still has plenty of potential to grow according to my assistant. In terms of other players who came in and maybe played a lot of games. Johan Drian, our defensive midfielder. He played 30 games in the league getting a 6.89 average rating. In terms of his raw attributes he hasn't really improved a great deal. But hopefully that will come with time. Robert Martinez was a free sign in that start of the season as I was starting. Left back a 3.5 star, 3.5 star is fine by me. But he started kicking up a fuss about new contract. And to be fair, once Tristan Fick came in, he sort of found himself being second choice. So I'm happy if he leaves the club in the season. Jord Banger did okay when he came in in January. Skirbeck is still improving a little bit. 
but he is a two and a half star, three and a half star striker now, so he has lost that potential compared to the rest of the squad. If he stays, I'll be very happy, but he would definitely be a backup uh, striker. Dragomir Milenkovic had a poor season really from January when we signed him to replace Nut John's guard. Um, probably a little bit just getting used to the country and stuff like that, so I'm not going to judge him too harshly. And at one and a half million pounds, he's definitely one of the best signs of the season, I do believe. Claudio, it was a big money sign, and he was a, he was our non-EU player. His potential has definitely been downgraded compared to the rest of the squad. And it was part of the reason why I thought maybe to cut the attacking midfielder altogether and just put them in at central midfield. Uh, he is wanted by Torino at the minute, and if he was to leave the club, I'm not going to lie, I wouldn't be too bothered. So looking forward to next season, I do think that maybe... Uh, Champions League football has got to be the aim again. I don't think we'll be challenging for Serie A just yet. We've got a lot of young players and a lot of players who are going to take a good few years to grow and become the sort of elite players you need to be able to beat Juventus in Italy, you know. And obviously the summer transfer window with our director of football in charge of sales will be huge for us this year. Depending on what happens in terms of the sales will depend on the amount of incomings that come, you know. There's not that many players who were available at our price point and with our club reputation who would join the club. Um, so unless there's massive sales, I can't say there being a huge number of players come in. So we'll get towards the end of season stuff and the end of season awards have come in. Belangiwoli wins player of the year, which is completely understandable because of how he's played. Carpano and Rada getting the other two spots, second and third. Nuts John's guard with the goal of the season. We'll have a look at that. Tristan Fick gets signed of the season and Belangioli with the young player of the season. So this is the goal that is one goal of the season for us. John's guard, the final memory of him after he's left the club for Man City. What a great goal that was. But I am keeping an eye on John's guard. He's not really playing at Man City. They've signed him and he's definitely a backup option. So if he is to come back on the market as a transfer listed option, you never know, he might come back. In terms of the confidence review, the board are obviously loving what we're doing at the club. Obviously, we've just won, gotten the Champions League. They should be loving it. We have won Manager of the Year. I think that's the first time we've won Manager of the Year in this save, so that is fantastic. Uh, have we got somebody here? Belangioli come third in Defender of the Year for Serie A, which is obviously great. That's the only one we've got, so we'll take it. So yeah, looking forward to next year. It's going to be a busy summer transfer window depending on the outgoings. I do imagine there is going to be quite a number. But I'm, I'm, I think Carpani is going to leave the club. He's wanted by the likes of Real Madrid and PSG. The likelihood is they're going to bid enough to tempt my director of football to sell. We've already got 50 million. That is the budget for next season. Uh, we'll take a look at the wages actually because that has already been set. So we've got 165 grand available in the wages. I am going to try and put some of that into getting the players we've already got on a new contract just to try and fend off any interest but obviously the 50 million pounds will give me enough to be able to replace anybody who leaves anyway if you have enjoyed today's video please consider leaving a like and if you enjoy my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy